Welcome back, everyone, to Coriander Society Adventures. I'm your game master, Tormented by Gnomes. Joining me today on this Tuesday of all Tuesdays is Beatdown Boulevard, a.k.a. Gaston. Everything going well on your side of the world? Yes. I just got some more water. I actually ran out of that surprisingly quickly. But yeah. We're, we're hydrated. Dude, I'm out here in Arizona. It's leaking through my, oh my pores. God. My gleaming forehead is just emitting the humidity of like a swamp as it's just evaporating into nothingness. It's not good. What's the temperature there? It's not that hot. It's just really dry. It's like uh, 70s, 80s, I think, though. I haven't gone outside all day because you don't go outside because it's Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. But Fair it enough. is what it is. When we last left our hero, he and the Plasmar Samuel had entered a time distortion vortex in which he intends to remain until he runs out of food, water, and oxygen. He has 12 days, 12 days to spend completely alone with no company other than an energy being with whom he cannot communicate and mind-bending, absolutely just non-Newtonian post-Einstein math and energy to contemplate not even the rest of the universe to keep himself company as he's created a pocket of delayed flow time this might be the most sophisticated challenge gaston has ever taken on scientifically speaking and we're going to resolve it in a couple of ways. And one of them is by making a crap load of science checks and then calculating <laughs> at the end. So for today, give me a science check minus 1d4 for being irradiated. Science. The one problem with so many tabs, you start to forget where Dude. things are. Yeah, I lose stuff all the time. I'm just glad they had a spare monitor for me. If I had to do all this on my laptop alone, I would be an, oh my God. an unhappy man. Spain without the S. <laughs> Slash R14. A dirty 20. Okay. Day one. 16 hours of constant study. Half rations. Drinking water. Taking tons and tons of notes just starting to fill the entire area with notes, calculations inscribed on the very surface itself, running through things, con con energy readings, left, right, and center. Samuel just stands there. You sleep for eight hours when you get tired. If you're wearing a watch, it still works. It still ticks. It's not a magical time sensor. It just moves at a certain rotation. So your pocket watch is still keeping the time. But it's the only way you have of knowing when you should eat, when you should sleep, aside from just what your body tells you. Yeah. A long rest purges the radiation from your body. Had it gotten any worse, we might be having a different conversation. But one level of radiation, gone. You're good. The next day, you started to scratch the surface. You're starting to run the math. Advanced versions of calculations that normally would require a supercomputer to run. All you have is your mind. Let's see if it's up to the challenge. Roll science. Seventeen. It's difficult. You... How comfortable is Gaston with solitude? Um, pretty, pretty okay with it. He's mm -hmm. kind of a dude who would like to, who does like doing things on his own anyway, because it's mm -hmm. kind of like, uh, for you Mass Effect fans, had to be me, someone else might have got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like a, f a f uh, if ten being extremely comfortable, borderline antisocial, we'll say he's like a six or a seven. Okay. So two days of just being absolutely in the zone doesn't bother him. All right. Day three, roll a science check. Ten. Chat restocked you with one more inspiration if you want to cash that in. I would like to. Okay. Of chat. That's gone. Roll again. Take the better of the two. <laughs> Eleven. It is better. It's technically better. You're hitting a wall. Some of the calculations just don't make any sense 
Roll a wisdom saving throw, please. Okay, an 18. The isolation isn't getting to you, but there's just something about this that your brain isn't grasping. It doesn't, it, like I said, it's not that it's difficult, it's that it's paradoxical. It sh these, these results shouldn't be possible. You must be doing something wrong. Day four, roll science check. 22. You pick up where you left off. You get back into that flow state. You've been fighting that boss in Elden Ring for eight hours. You get some sleep. You come back to it the next day. Suddenly, on your second try, you were able to beat it. Things are beginning... You're beginning to understand. And moreover, the math itself, what it's telling you about the universe, about time. Time and space, they're one and the same. They're all part of the same grand calculation. And these people found a unified theory that worked that combined all of it and you're on the trail of that and at the edge of that seeing what it is they were actually trying to do seeing what they were trying to uncover they were trying to make time go backwards they were looking into actual time travel the math doesn't say it's possible, but they were chasing it. You're beginning to understand. Samuel stands there, bathing in the energy emitting from this globe, utterly silent aside from some vague magnetic buzzing. From time to time, the field that he generates disrupts your scanner, and you have to thwack it and degauss it in order to make <laughs> it work. Chat has given you disadvantage. Unless you sing a stanza of scientist Solarian from Mass Effect. If you do, I get the disadvantage. Okay, deal. Hold on. I have to I have to look it up. It's been a while. You also got an abacus. Where is it? Long-term isolation begins to modify Gaston's mind and words of a tune that does not exist in his world, and furthermore, a strange variation of that tune, which furthermore doesn't exist in his world, drift through his head. <laughs> so a stanza means like the first four lines? It's been a while since I've been in English. Sure, probably. <clears throat> okay. Oh God, this is uh, anything. Anything for science understanding, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I am the very model of a scientist, Solarian. I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert, which I know is a tautology. All right, disadvantage on me. Well done. <laughs> also, Jack gave you seashells for science. Huh. To be to be fair, you didn't. I don't know if you have any toilet paper, so you need to use the seashells. Is that a thing? It's a oh God. What is that from? It's a reference to something. My mind is full of half assembled references from media I've never actually consumed, but I've been absolutely immersed in. Demolition Man. We'll we'll, we'll drop it in chat later. Thank you, chat. Okay, day five. I have disadvantage. You don't have advantage. So I'll just sit with that, I guess. Go ahead and roll a science check. Uh, science. A 14. Do you have any inspiration left on your character sheet in the tank or are you empty on your character sheet? I definitely have plenty. So we're going to go ahead and spend one. Okay. Science. A 22 instead. Again, this machine is not designed to try to reverse the flow of time because all the, but it is designed to test the limits of the degree to which time can be modified in an area. What you've done here is basically just taken this machine and expanded its field of operation. The fact that it's contained is almost a miracle. That's part of the reason why Samuel is just sitting there vibing with it. He doesn't need to break through this containment sphere because you've expanded this tachyon influence to include him. So he's just 
<laughs> charging up. Day six. The math is in your head. You're having strange, bizarre dreams. Caught off from everyone and everything else. Dreaming alone in the universe. Do plasmars dream? Does Samuel even sleep? Does his mind generate the same wavelengths? Roll a wisdom saving throw, please. Gaston. You are beginning to understand. You are beginning to comprehend. You are beginning to know things that you shouldn't know. Parts of the equation that just would never have occurred to you, but you find your hand writing them on your own, as if this knowledge is just bubbling up through the cracks in your own brain, in your own mind. You are following the same trail of logic that led the Lacunians to try to reverse the irreversible, to stop the tide itself, to spit in the face of nature, to take a look at the laws of physics and defy them. The sin that broke their universe, you are getting closer and closer to understanding. You are comprehending things that mortals were never meant to understand, and it is changing you. Gaston, your research into temporal studies has resulted in you acquiring one point of corruption. Where do I put that? On your character sheet, wherever you feel like it. Here is how that works. You now have, I'm not going to say forbidden, but just nigh incomprehensible knowledge in your mind that you've begun to tap into. The math between the, the spaces in the universe. You may voluntarily send your mind back to that place to draw upon that insight. You see, what you've encountered is a force that you've seen others in Northport succumb to. Those who study the ways of science, some of them, it changes them. People like Dr. Zorbius, mad science. And should you ever wish to call upon this forbidden knowledge, you can automatically gain another point of corruption and get advantage on any B20 roll of your choice. Mm. Furthermore, you may choose to incorporate these, this information, this mad science, into your inventions and contraptions, making them more powerful. All you have to do is tell me you're doing it. The downside of this is that anytime your flaw is I can do it, I don't need anyone's help, I can do it myself. And this the fact that you're beginning to understand the inner workings of the universe, this is something that John could never comprehend, let alone Asena. There's no compulsion on you. You're still free to act as you choose, but you're becoming a little bit more certain of that fact that you are capable of understanding things that everyone else cannot comprehend. Anytime you have to roll a saving throw that has to do with your flaw, you will have disadvantage on that saving throw. And from a role play perspective, it's just slightly more at the forefront of your mind. Mm -hmm. That being said, because that just happened, roll your sixth science check with advantage. As you get this burst of insight. 26. Yes, yes. Day seven. You're halfway through your food and your water, but your air is still being scrubbed pure. The flow of time, this is what pulled the chronophage. If you can understand this process more, the, the process by which they, they attempted to reverse time without doing it yourself, that is what let the chronophage into their universe, led it to feed on their solar system. They tried to reverse time. They tried to go back in time. When they activated it, instead, they got a chronophage. 
If you can understand more about where it comes from, how it feeds this entire process, its origins, you may be able to destroy it, or weaken it. Day seven, roll science check. A dirty 22. A lot of 22s today. Yeah. Which means you've been rolling a lot of 15s. Day eight. When they activated their temporal machine, that was the where this research was eventually heading. The chronophage emerged simultaneously across their entire solar system. Distributed as an energy pattern, not a single corporeal entity. The moment that it arrived, its mere presence, the area that was frozen in time was the area that the chronophage occupied. It, it took up the entire solar system. That's the first thing that you've understood. So it's, it's very nature. It's not like, oh, there it is. It's right there. It is, it is a, a concept. It is this weird waveform that has to be, it's going to be tough to destroy. But perhaps with this knowledge, you can do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Day eight, roll a science check. Oh, experience. Plus one XP and 12. Would you like to burn a point of inspiration or let the 12 ride? I would, boy, I would like to burn inspiration. Okay, burn it and roll again. 25. The chronophage came into existence at the moment that they activated. They tried to reverse time. They finally got the energy. They finally did the math. Most of their experiment, they had tried experiments before. They had all failed. This was like in our world on Earth when people were developing the nuclear bomb. Some of the scientists were afraid that it would ignite the entire atmosphere on fire and burn the whole planet. They had to do a lot of math to make sure that that wasn't actually going to happen because they thought it was a possibility. What happened when the Lacunians activated the time portal was effectively that. There was this reaction where space and time in, uh, in their one astronomical unit effectively caught fire. The chronophage started to exist throughout that entire area and it fed as it held time in place, it fed on the passage of time that would have occurred otherwise. It took the reason that the time, that the stasis lasted for 10,000 years is because that's how long it took for the chronophage to finish undergoing metamorphosis, feeding and growing stronger until it went from just being a local anomaly to being a coalesced entity in and of itself. When it stopped, Undergoing metamorphosis, time resumed. Day nine. Roll Wait. Over. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Is mm -hmm. that... Does that mean time didn't actually pass between... Because if you're saying it took exactly 10,000 years, what mm -hmm. if the people from Lacunas left here and it actually wasn't all that long ago because they left here, chronophage shit happened, and then as soon as that was done, we showed up. And from the outside perspective, no time has passed. You know what I'm trying to say? Let me, let me walk you through roughly how this happened, right? Yeah. The all time was flowing across universes sequentially. One minute mm -hmm. is one minute. The Lacunians in their universe travel to this universe, Pyre Space, separate universe. They have a colony on Ashen. Both of these planets exist in the same time frame. Lacunus activates the time portal, activates the chronophage. They press pause on their solar system. Their whole solar system yeah. is now paused. Yeah. Time continues to flow on Ashen. Anybody who tries to go from Ashen to Lacunus immediately gets paused. They enter that chrono, that time sphere, and they, they're on pause upon arrival. Because what happened was nobody, Ashen's colony was like, nobody's coming from Lacunas anymore. We're cut off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when the dragons invaded and the dragons attacked the city of Spires. They used the portal. They all went to Lacunas. But when they arrived, an instant pause. They didn't even go through the portal. They arrived like 
just on the other side of the portal, pause. Army of dragons all paused. The chronophage eating that time away. Time continues to turn for Ashen for 10,000 years. Then 200 years ago in universe time, the chronophage finishes evolving and its cocoon breaks. Time now continues. So they were on pause for 10,000 years while the rest of the world kept turning. But everybody yeah. who entered that area at that time also went on pause. So for the Ulhar, the dragons who, who arrived there, and for the people who lived on that planet, all this happened 200... It was like they turned on the portal, and the moment they activated the time portal, the stars changed because they were frozen for 10,000 years, so the stars changed, and they were instantaneously invaded by an army of dragons. Yeah. This is interesting when you think about like the sequence of events outside of it, mm -hmm. because because like Lacuna, the people Lacunians came here, mm -hmm. did some sort of business, and then left. And it stands to reason they'd likely come back within a reasonable time frame, but because of the whole chronophage thing, they didn't. So that's right. why I just found it interesting that it turns out oh, because they were even all the the Maru people are like oh yeah, it's been ten thousand years, and as soon mm -hmm. as he said that, I'm like. Wait a second. Yeah. Because for them, it has. And mm -hmm. what happened to the Lacunians who were on Ashen, they knew they couldn't go home. They didn't know why. They just knew that anybody who went in the portal, nobody came back. They yeah. hadn't had reinforcements for a long time. So they created the Maru in order to help them fight the dragons because the dragons were like, oh, they've been cut off from all their tech. Let's kick their asses. Also, they're ruining our planet. Let's kick their asses. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, the Lacunians on Ashen left the planet by building three colony ships and they they abandoned the planet in pyre space and that's why pyre space has humans makes sense cool any other questions on that no okay day nine roll a wisdom saving throw a flat 10 is there anything you want to do with that Yes, I think mental health is very important, so I'm going to use my inspiration okay. for another roll. 11. <laughs> I guess. Burn the inspiration, and you now have two points of corruption. Oh, God. Studying this is hurting your brain. But it's also unlocking new avenues of knowledge. This, by the way, is that corruption act of God that we were going to bring in. Ah, I had a feeling. That's yeah. how I decided to deploy it. Nice. So you're still mildly corrupted. You, you haven't crossed that threshold yet. But this is, it's, you've been alone for nine days. Not, no outside world, no friends to talk to, no nothing. Just this living inside this space. And I got to tell you, once in college, I stayed up all night and watched every single episode of Invader Zim, and the next day my reality was altered. This is that, except on taken to the next level. Okay. That, <laughs> that said, because of that flash of insight, roll another science check with advantage. Oh, 26. Okay, so the chronophage, a parasite. Either it was brought into existence, either it, it was created by the attempt to reverse time, or it's a type of entity that exists some when just flowing backwards in a time stream inaccessible to us because it's flowing in a different direction. And by attempting to reverse things, they invited it accidentally into this universe. Now that it has finished its evolution, it doesn't, it's not feeding on the entire solar system anymore, but it is mobile. It can move around. It can go to different places and it can feed on entities that it finds and traps in stasis. Uh, but, you have three days of study left. You've been doing really, really excellently well. You might be able to stop it 
like negate its powers, protect yourself. You might be able to build countermeasures to defend yourself. And maybe you can develop some sort of a weapon by using accelerated tachyon particles, maybe combined with magic. You're not sure yet. You have three days left. Day 10, roll a science check. Oh, 10. And burn some inspiration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Wow>. hmm, 12. <laughs> After going through all that study, and, and shifting your mind to trying to come up with a, a different application for it, you've hit another wall. Do you continue to study what they were trying to do and actually reversing the flow of time, which is either impossible or they just botched it so badly that it brought this chronophage. But you're, you're led to believe that any other attempts to, to actually reverse time will tap into that alternate reality, that inverse time stream and could activate this incident again. It'd be incredibly hard to reproduce. It's, there's a reason that wizards just fiddling around with time magic don't constantly summon chronophages into their universes. The circumstances under which this happened were extremely specific. I will, I will try for one more day and see what I discover. That was day 10. You have two more days. Yep. Okay, day 11. Roll it. 22. Okay. Do you want to go for day 12 or no? You have the supplies. At the end of day 12, you will be out. I do want to go for day 12, but I actually, yeah, we're, we're just going to full send it. Okay. On day 12, you're going through the last scraps of food. Fortunately, it was all trail rations and stuff designed to survive this. You've been eating nuts and MREs for over a, nearly two weeks. Roll one more wisdom saving throw. Okay. Okay. You're holding it together. You're holding it together. Maybe, maybe, maybe letting yourself slip. Maybe letting your mind wander. Maybe following that logic would help you fully understand, but you decide to stay just at the edge of that deep crevasse. Not taking the plunge. Roll one more science check. Twelve. It's my last day. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta shoot for the moon. Okay, roll it. One more inspiration down. Nice. Dirty twenty. Okay, you are tired. You probably smell bad. Not mm -hmm. that there's anyone around to tell you that, because I don't know if you brought anything to take a shower for the last twelve days. Um. Not gonna lie, it didn't cross my mind, so no. I mean, who are you going to have to impress? Samuel? Does he even have <laughs> yeah. olfactory organs? Still, okay. He's still a big question mark. By studying this contained sphere, you have learned the following. The chronophage is completely immune to non-magical physical damage because it is incorporeal. It almost exists as more of an energy wavelength than an actual physical entity. Because it doesn't have a body, it's not subject to any physiological attacks like poison or necrotic damage. Completely immune to that. In addition, because it is um, incorporeal, acid, fire, cold, lightning, thunder, what you <laughs> classically think of as elemental damage. Half, half damage at best. Magically affected weapons, half damage at best. The most effective attacks to use against it are psychic damage, force damage, and radiant damage. Those won't give you any special edge. They're just going to deal full damage to it. What else do you know about it? Um, 
it has limited magic immunity, which means that any magical effect of sixth level or lower completely no sells it. It has a null time field around it. Just being within 30 feet of it can freeze you in time. You believe that through your studies, you could build protective devices. Well, I'm not going to say specifically the application. You're the engineer. But you believe that you could build, you understand tachyon physics in a way to create something that would protect against its null time field that it generates. And possibly negate some of its abilities that it uses to flit around, temporarily not exist, um, sort of anchor it in time. Now, I'm making a couple of things up, but you did really, really well in your 12 days of study. Do you have any other cool ideas or effects that you would rather, aside from defending yourself from its bullshit abilities, is there any specific insight that you're looking to get? Uh, I mostly want to... Okay, so... Is there a way I can weaponize temporal energy? And will that actually do anything to it? Because it's a being that is theorized to be sliding backwards in time. So is there like a way I could make a thing that pushes things forward in time and you have mm -hmm. the whole cancel out type of deal? Mm -hmm. To harm it or to nerf it? To unalive it. Okay, to unalive it. Oh, Let's take a look here. Or because because or maybe if I, or maybe if I like understood more like in depth of the process of how they summoned it to begin with, mm -hmm. there could be I could figure out a way to just you know do the opposite, just do it backwards. Oh, so not like carrying something around with you, not like just a gun, but some sort of yeah, recreate an anti do the. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. How would that work? They built a huge tachyon particle accelerator. Yeah. And spun it up, and it took like a couple of years for the for it to build up to full power, and then they essentially collided tachyons with each other in an inverse magnetic plasma field. So if you were to, if you wanted to reverse that. You have an idea for a prototype right now, but it would be extremely large. Yeah. It would, it would be very large. You'd need to basically build a space station and then send the space station at it. So you'd need a, a large amount of resources, a ton of power. This would be a big, big project. Um, and it might work. So my idea with this is definitely like get an idea and it's kind of like, a, all right, this is in my back pocket now for when we go back to inevitably go back to lacunas because mm -hmm. they one, it's like more their problem than anyone else. So I right. don't think I will be having too much difficulty being like, Hey, I'm pretty sure I can fix your big giant time eating monster problem. And I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to be like, well, that sounds expensive. <laughs> True. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's imagine it as a gigantic, not like a halo ring sized thing, but like a circular station that you, you need to get the chronophage in range of it. It wouldn't be like covering the entire solar system. You need to lure it into range and then get it, power the whole thing up and fire it, which would mean you wouldn't, you would still need to confront it in combat, but you wouldn't need to like beat it. You would just need to it survive it and prevent it from escaping long enough to activate the doomsday device, the, the, the time death star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Cool. I like it. Awesome. All right. Uh, you've also gained a, an ass load of research points. I will tell you specifically where, um, 
after I do some additional research, it's probably going to be physics. Yeah, it's physics. I'll, I'll, I need to make notes because I did not expect you to do this. So I will get you <laughs> notes on this later for how many research points you get into physics. But you get a crap load of research points into physics. Um, add the physics category because I don't have that yet. Well, congratulations. You do now. Log. Yeah, I, I know I know what I'm gonna I know what I'm gonna give you in that category, but I'll I'll do the math later. Okay, um, fourteen thousand fourteen thousand <laughs> physics research points. <laughs> All right. Which unlocks lasers, both large and small. You don't have to write all this down. I'm just gonna rattle it off. Laser cannons, laser rifles, space scanners. So like your little scanner, except on steroids now, you can build much larger <laughs> scanners. Fusion beams, fusion rifles, battle scanners, tachyon communications, and tachyon scanners. So by using temporal physics, you can now create scanners and comms devices that travel instantaneously across solar systems. You can't just instantly do these things like for each of these schematics you're going to need to like actually build it but you understand the fundamental you basically just jumped up to level six physics instantaneously sick and by instantaneously i mean by risking your sanity over the course of 12 days in a time bubble <laughs> speaking of which you will now need to safely disable the time bubble it's not like you set. it's not like you could just set the, the egg timer to 12 days and then turn it off right yeah, I figured this was coming too. This whole thing is jury rigged still. Yeah. All right, what do you need from me? Well, the process last time was electrician's tools, tinker's tools, science. So the, the first you're going to need to do a science check, which is to say, okay, based on the relative temporal inertia between these two fields, what am I going to need to 14? You think you've done the math? I mean, you've been studying this stuff for 12 days. You should have this unlock, right? 14 will be good enough, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Tinker's tools to adjust the actual plasma conduits and prepare to adjust and prepare to tweak the electricity levels. 18. And finally, electrician's tools. 28. Awesome. All right. So because of the fantastic result on electrician's tools, you don't re release a wave of mutation effectively. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All over yourself. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Why is this not? Hang on. I'm, I'm tweaking the window because it's not quite showing up properly. I'll have to take a look at that in a moment, chat. That being said, the adjustment of the two does create some weirdness. Please roll 1D100. Seventy-three. Okay. As time snaps back, it reacts with everything in the room differently. And in this case, it reacts with your atomic ray. Roll an attack. Roll 1d8, please. Seven. Okay. The charged pulse of power passes through your atomic ray. And normally it would have fired. It would have actually just fired wherever it was, damaging the nearby equipment, you, or hitting Samuel, which honestly would have probably been harmless. But a seven on the experimental weapons table is a misfire, meaning that it breaks. <laughs> There's this huge arcing. Pss, pss, lightning charges off of it it spews in random directions it's very impressive lots of star trek style sparks go everywhere uh 
and it's damaged. So you'll need to repair it over the course of a short or long rest. But otherwise, you could have done. You didn't get sucked into another dimension, so you're doing better than the the other party mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Uh, plus, I have a shitload of physics points now, so I can make a better atomic ray. Yeah. Actually, literally, yes. You can build. <laughs> with time, you'll be able to build non-experimental atomic rays. Let's go. And laser weapons and all that jazz. All right. So Samuel also absorbs this massive wave of energy and continues to stand there, just soaking it in. Hmm. Does he look different from day one? More glowy. The complexity of the magnetic diffraction patterns passing over his almost liquid, but it's just a congealed force field skin, have intensified. He's got more coloration, more, more spectrums going around there. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, unlike you, doesn't need to sleep and he feeds on pure energy, so has just been gorging himself. Could you remind me what I know of Samuel? You know he is a plasma entity, he is highly intelligent, and he probably comes from a star. Like, his kind would live in the surfaces of stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now that we're back to we're back to normal time, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, I want to open the hatch door thing. Okay. And... Boignus uh, and Molly are, are sitting up against either wall. It seems like there was an awkward silence going on. As, as you open the door, they get up to their feet and they're like, Gaston, you smell terrible, lad. Yeah, long story. It's been 12 days. Uh, Molly, come here. She walks forward. Uh, I don't understand why Samuel is doing well that. You could <laughs> get him to tell you or if I gesture, will he say something that you can interpret? Um, yeah, she has another use of comprehend languages. It has, did it expire? It lasts for one hour, so it has expired, so she has to recast it. But she's got it in the tank. Nice. She activates it, and she just walks up and says, Samuel? Hello? It's one way. I don't know if he understands me. Uh, I'm gonna gonna wave at Samuel. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. okay. It's gonna do some hands. It's gonna do something like this. I'm gonna wave at Samuel. Mm -hmm. Point to that. Point to him and then just shrug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. He says he's extremely well fed now. His strength is restored. And he has no way of returning home. Uh, okay. I'm going to point to him, Samuel, again. And do mm -hmm. like the... It's like point to him, point to us, and then be like, you know, come with us kind of idea. This is, hard. This is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge, all right. He wants to know if we have a way... To take him home. To a star? Maybe? I mean, there's the pyre. We could go near it. It's... Do we just throw him? <laughs> Can we even touch him? No, we shouldn't touch him. And frankly, if he stands on the deck of Pilgrim's Progress, I'll probably burn right through it. We'd need... Something for him to, you know. He has. It seems like he has some sort of control over the amount of energy that he exp that he emits. But I'm reasonably certain that anybody who touches him, yeah, any creature that touches him or hits him with a melee attack takes damage. So he's just constantly burning. So we need to figure out a way to communicate with him if we're going to be able to do this effectively. Yeah. Now, Asena's telepathic. She could do it. True. Um, wow, okay. So then I suppose we should just meet up with them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But also, I still have to finish. Hmm. 
that might be a that might a, that might be a later guest on problem. Mm. Trying to think, trying to think, trying to think. Okay, because I because because I still had that plan to. Now that I've made like the Maru spawn or the anti Maru spawn stuff, I wanted to make something that would also help them find. Because I remember there's there was some expressing like mm -hmm. there's like a, there's like a faction trying to find old forms that they used to have right and stuff like that and I wanted to help with that too. Mm -hmm. You would basically need to meet with them in order to well not necessarily you could try working on some stuff after all how hard is biology really uh, <laughs> you, should, <laughs> you should do some more biology research uh, if you really want to master that or you should go communicate with that group that cell that is conducting that research and has been conducting that research for who knows how long okay uh, that's probably that will probably be the route that I uh, that's probably gonna be the route I go okay, okay. for now we're gonna we should just go back to mm -hmm. See if he'll come with us, and we'll go back to, I guess, the the original lab we were at, and then we can just leave, because I don't okay. think we need to be here anymore. There are a few more doors you haven't explored, but Samuel has no desire to go through them. He's just soaking this stuff in. Roll a persuasion check with disadvantage to try to convince him to go with you and to successfully communicate that with him. Ugh. Eight. You're not sure if it's a loss in translation or if he just doesn't. He he keeps saying he's well fed here. This is a good place. His home is a different shade, a different tone. This isn't his home. Plain? Yeah, that would work. That would be a valid translation, yes. This universe isn't his home. I mean, it's not mine either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it seems like he mostly is just staying with this energy source as a, as a known good. And either we're not communicating successfully or we're not making our case to him because of the language barrier. But if he's going to stay here, once we get a scene, we could always bring him here and have her chat with him. Yeah, I, I guess he's that's just gonna, gonna be lurk the, here. I guess that's the best call. So we'll just leave. I'll like wait a second to see if he's gonna follow. If not, mm -hmm. we'll we'll leave him for now. Okay. All right. And are you going to open any of the other doors at all? Uh yeah. I'll try. I'll try them. Okay. Which uh, let me go ahead and enter the airlock. We'll say goodbye to Samuel for now. Airlock sealed. Airlock opened. This room has light sources. Samuel was your light source. Oh, right. Um, where are the doors again? The, like here and yep. here? Yep. And there's two on the south wall as well. Wow. Uh, I'm going to try one. If there are monsters, I give up on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the door that you want to open? Yeah. Okay. One moment, please. Stupid freaking mouse pad. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Okay. You are able to open the door, revealing, well, Nothing, because um, you don't have a light source. Do, do you? Does Gaston carry like a like a flashlight or anything on him? Uh, the thing is, I had one. Mm -hmm. It was like a backpack light thingy for when. Right, I, I remember you were using table. a small fusion reactor as a flashlight. Oh, <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, I could do that. Just hold it up, be like, use it as a light. <laughs> you have that plasma orb that uh, Samuel gave you. Yeah. It casts a very small amount of light. I'll take it. Okay. Brown. 
Oh, cool. All right. Uh, observation analysis chamber. This was probably one of the, the areas used to analyze the data coming in from the tachyon accelerator in that other area. One, two, three, four. Okay, roll a investigation check. We're going to take the first result because you shouldn't have had either advantage or disadvantage on that roll. So at 28, you found 20 gold worth of transistors, capacitors, sci-fi building materials and such. But you also found a, a device. Let me find out a little bit more about it. One moment. Roll 1D100. Fifty-four. All right, so it's a it's a plate. It's like an a plate that is in an odd material. It's not rounded. It's almost jagged and curved. It's just this irregular, like Nickelodeon splash style thing. And give me another one D one hundred, please. And it's made of a crystalline substance, an artificial translucent, so light can pass through it, but it's not completely clear, crystalline substance. Looks like one side of it has a bunch of micro hooks on it. It's clearly artificially made. What I call it, crystalline something or other? Weird crystalline plate. That sounds good. Uh, does this computer thing work? It does not. What are the chances that I can make it work? <laughs> Roll Tinker's Tools first. Twenty-three. Roll Electrician's Tools. Fourteen. It's kind of sparking to life a little bit, maybe. You could try to get some data off of it if you want, but it's not working great. Do you want to give it a shot? Yeah. Ro roll yeah, science check with disadvantage. 16. Okay. Uh, you gain 450 research points in force fields. Ooh. This thing was designed to study the containment field that, that held the tachyon reaction in check. So it's useful for that. Was there anything 400? else? 450 research points, force fields. How many do you have total? 3350. Cool. Get enough with this and you can learn anti-gravity shit. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, I think I'm good on this computer. Cool. Where do you want to go next? We'll try one more door right here, and mm -hmm. then might chalk it up after that. Okay. All right. Let me swing this door open for you. Jesus. You already see a ton of debris. Uh, metal and rock has absolutely collapsed down onto this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the, mm -hmm. the rock is slightly wet, damp. Huh. Well, this is. I, I guess I doubt there's anything like salvageable here. It's just. You can search through the debris. 
if you want, you could search through the debris to see if there's anything salvageable. It would be an investigation check. Okay. I'll try that. All right. Roll flat investigation check. 19. Okay. As you're searching around, going through things, uh, it's odd that this rock would be here. It doesn't seem to match the local geography. Roll for initiative. Huh? Roll for initiative. Okay. 13. One moment, please. As soon as you start to realize that something is amiss, and if you hadn't rolled so high on your investigation check, it, it would have surprised you. A mineral ooze. An ooze that when dormant is literally indistinguishable from wet rock surges forward at you. Oh, awesome. Your companions do not roll in this round because they have no idea what's going on. Yeah. All right, so we got an eight. I'm going to go ahead and manually drop it in here because I borked it up a bit. So you realize this is not friendly? And that's the wrong thing. Is it still? No, it's there. Okay. Yep, there it is. All right. You realize that this thing is alive and it is hungry, or at least it's predatory. You go first. What do you do? You can use a bonus action to make a science check to see what you know about it, but that would use your bonus action. I'll do that next turn because this turn I'm going to use a bonus action to drop my second uh, uh, electro spider. Okay. I'm going to just drop it right in front of me and mm -hmm. then run out of the room. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Uh, little... As so you drop it and you run out of the room and it makes an attack of opportunity. Yes. Slam. A pseudopod rises up and lashes out towards you. Uh, I have inspiration and I have I have disadvantage because you sang a song and I have inspiration oh, yeah. because Jack gave it to me. So we're just going to let it ride. Does a 14 hit? No. Okay. You managed to dodge out of the way. You've used your bonus action. You could close that door with an item interaction if you want. Oh, I would like that so very much, Gnomes. Okay. Door status closed. What would you like to use your... Action to yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen this one before. Cool. Roll 5d8. Wait, I can just press the button. Nice. 20 points of damage. Okay. The thing does get a dexterity saving throw. You want to guess how good the dexterity on a mineral ooze is? I'm going to guess really low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, you can't really tell what's going on in there, however. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with just leaving it there forever. I think we should all just leave now. <laughs> we don't need to have this conversation, do we? Are we good? Everyone's good? Your, good. Your, your companions just look at you as you walk in, close the door, click the switch. Electricity goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like panic look on my face. They're like, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, God, we need to leave now. We need to leave Okay, so you guys are able to use the secret hatch. It's also good that your friends were hanging out in the secured room because every hour you spend near radiation, you have to make another saving throw. Oh, wow. But you're able to use the security hatch, and do you just want to completely retrace your steps all the way back? Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to bother with all of that right now because I'm on a touchpad, and I don't feel like escorting everybody the entire way. Okay. You arrive back there, and shortly afterwards, you receive a sending spell from Hara. Lost contact with John and Asena and Tenkobel. Rest of pilgrims gathered together at John's mission site. Where are you? You can respond. Uh, what's the facility I'm in called? 
This is Vigilance's laboratory. Also, roll an Arcana check, which I don't believe you're proficient in. So just roll a uh, an intelligence check. No proficiency. Okay, you recall that this sort of magic usually has a, a word limit, but you don't know what the word limit mm. is. Gotcha. Okay, so I'll keep it brief. Um... Vigilance Laboratory. Talk later. Big breakthrough. Wear meat. There is a delay. As somewhere far away, Hara begrudgingly casts the spell again. And I will mark off the spell points. We will collect you. Need assistance tracking them down. Bad. Okay, no, actually, let me go back to the beginning. Terrible sandstorm cannot fly, cannot reach you. Shelter in place. Uh, understood. Okay. And as you emerge, you do in fact discover that all of the Maru spawn have locked themselves down. The worst sandstorm, perhaps in centuries, is ripping through the area above right now. It is generating so much static electricity that it is melting, flash melting sand in the very air as it travels through. Oh God. All fist sized balls of glass are falling on the outside city of Spires. This deep underground, you're completely safe and completely secure. But beyond that. Completely trapped. Completely trapped. Unless you could figure out some way to try to locate or reach them, but I don't know if you have that capability. This is from another act of God, the storm of the century, that's pretty much locked you guys down. Oh, wow. I, I actually don't even remember that. That's crazy. We weren't here for that one. Oh, that makes some, more sense. Some stuff has happened. I see. Um, okay. Well, I guess at this point, since I'm... Hmm. So this is this is this a, what are the chances this entire like underground bunker is connected to other areas of the city of spires? It is actually. However, most of the lower areas are controlled by wisdoms loyalists. Ah. Good thing wisdoms loyal to me. Wisdom you haven't met yet. Wisdom oh, I'm is thinking of... Uh, vig of um, they all have these freaking... Vigilance. Vigilance is the oh, one. Vigilance. Yeah. So Vigilance is the local cell. Vigilance is the cell you've turned against Wisdom. Wisdom is the one who says, hey, the Ancients will return when we kill all non maru spawn. You guys showed up at Vigilance. You made a show of force. You showed off your technology. You were like, hey, that's all complete garbo. We're actually the ancients. So now vigilance is on your side, but the vast majority of the other cells are against you. Most of the city of Spires is interconnected through an incredible underground. Well, it didn't used to be underground, but now it's under thousands and thousands of tons of sand. But it's all connected in the huge warrens. The problem is most of it's infested with hostile Maru spawn, or at least Maru spawn who have no reason to trust you. So you and your compatriots can, what, what do you have in mind? So one, I'm going to ask Vigilance if I can find a place to clean myself. Yeah, um, absolutely. They'll go ahead and let you, uh, let you wash off in one of their artificial cyclers. They only need half the water that anybody else does. And I nice. think Bogok Cairnmelter has a spell that might help. I think he can create water. I'll double check that. Wait, a that would have been incredible. <laughs> but he was on the wrong side of the blast doors that whole time. Yeah, well, that's okay. He also um, would have been a good person to keep with you to help you stay, you know, in your own head. 
Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. So in future time altering mm-hmm. circumstances, I will keep that in mind. Noted. Mm, so my idea is I'm going to, I want to, I'm just going to try the same thing I did with, uh, we did with Vigilance. Just okay. Other Mars spawn and, you know, we're the ancients, obey us. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're going to try to, uh, is your plan to reunite with the rest of the party by doing that? Or do you have any other directives on that? Uh, reunite with the rest of the party. I didn't get, I didn't happen to catch where Hara was, did I? Uh, you would know from previous information, she was going, she went to John's mission site. Hmm. Which is because she was traveling. She actually met up with him. So you know that there are three locations your team was going to. One group was going to the Cronepsis Rift, which is a dragon burial ground. One group was going to, well, then there is you. And the last one was going to a pyramid controlled by a Maru tact named Clarity. So you have the rough. And and vigilance knows where that is, so you would have and vigilance would know how to get there through the under tunnels. So if you want to start like making your way down there and trying, uh, he warns you this could set off some infighting, etc. But there is a possible path that would lead you there if you play it exactly right. It might be doable, especially if you get the help of the other Maru lurks who know all the secret ways. But do you want? Do you or your friends want to rest first? Do you yes, want to take definitely. a okay? Do you want to take a long rest first? I know you've had twelve, but your friends have not. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. A lot of you bundle up. Are you packing up all of your research, the zymes, the bio stuff that you've been working on? Your everything. Okay, you go through a whole lot of trouble to get everything all set and ready, and. The lot of you bundle down, and for them, it's like weird day, but for you, it's day 13, <laughs> at least since getting here. Yep. Uh, and perhaps appropriately, you have some difficulty sleeping. You, your head is still full of the hardest math you've ever done that made your brain overheat like an overclocked GPU. And you wake up in the middle of the night with just numbers and calculations and impossible geometry flowing through your head. Uh, everyone else is asleep at the moment. And you just, you're not sure that you're going to be able to get to sleep. What do you do? Oh, oh, oh wow, excuse me. Um, work on some notes. Start planning out the... Uh... Death Time Star. Mm-hmm. Okay. Roll a science check for me, please. I don't know why it's still eating that there, chat, but that was a 16. There, that. I thought I had that. All right, that'll do for now. A 16. You you go, you do the design, you're sketching out the form, you go over to check your notes, you look back, and the ring design is twisted on itself like an infinity symbol. You don't remember drawing it that way. Hmm. That's very odd. What do you do? Uh, is there is there like a significance to the infinity? You're aware of what like, it, you're aware of what it means. Like outside of the figure eight, it means infinity, or yeah, you you know it? you know sideways eight means infinity. You know this is an infinity symbol, not a not an eight on its side. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna pro- guess someone's probably gonna assume he spent too much time alone. Mm-hmm. He's going to close the notebook, go try and go back to sleep. Okay. All right. Close your eyes. Drift off again. 
It does that. There's that thing where when you're having trouble falling asleep or like you snooze your alarm, you close your eyes, you open them two seconds later and it's been five minutes. Yep. Awake again. Mm -hmm. Mm. What do you I'm going to try drawing notes. I'm going to try making notes again. Okay. You go back and your notebook is empty. None of the notes that you wrote earlier when you were awake last are in there. No sign that you were ever awake or ever did anything. They're gone. What? So then I'm going to try writing something down. Okay. What are you writing down? Anything from the last, anything from the 12 days that I, that come to me, calculations, concepts, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roll science check. Twenty four. Yep. Advanced, super sophisticated, uh, multi dimensional ve vector calculus. <laughs> checks out. Checks out. Checks out. Checks out. You stare at the page. It all looks right. Okay. I'm gonna close the book and then open it again. Okay. All the ink has smudged as if it's been in a rainstorm. Huh. So do I... I remember all this, right? Mm-hmm. It's just not written anywhere. Mm-hmm. Or rather, it can't be. Well, here's the thing. The notes you took during your 12 days inside the time distortion chamber, those are all still there. Oh, okay. Those okay. aren't gone. It's just the night before. It's the stuff you've written tonight. So I can't write anything. Huh. Okay, I'm going to write... I'm going to make a note about something random. Okay. Like, a Santa smells funny. All right. And then I'm going to close and open the book. All right. When you open the book, it's there, but it's backwards, as if it was written in a mirror. Oh, wow. Um, so... Okay. In, in the time I was there... Would mm -hmm. I be able to surmise whether or not this is like a result of basically time in that time bubble? Maybe it didn't work out the way I thought. Maybe there's always consequences when you do this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Is there anything to my knowledge that makes that possible? Uh, okay, possibilities. Well, multiverse theory in the commonly understood version of it, where every choice and decision creates a parallel universe that's very similar to yours, that has not fundamentally been proven. In fact, you've existed in multiple universes and they're not like the same universe that took different paths. They're just completely different universes. So that probably rules out like messing with time on that regard. Um, you don't have any known physics model for what could cause these specific effects that none of them make total sense. They're, they like you're having trouble drawing a causal link between them, I assume, right? Because you've got different effects. You've got your drawings changing. You've got things disappearing. You've got things getting smudged. So what's the common factor with all these? Roll a flat intelligence check for me. Twenty-two. Okay. Uh, the common factor with all these things is you and your perception, right? None of these things are things that would make sense for time distortion, but they might make sense if your own perception has been altered in some way. Uh, or magic, because magic can do, you know, fucking anything. But as far yeah. as you know, you weren't specifically messing with magic. The Lacunians discovered magic when they got here, but that whole setup was not... You've meddled with tech magic. You started to study tech magic. That wasn't tech magic. 
So either these are only some possibilities. I'm not giving you a, a, a complete, this is what's happening. But logically, either you have been changed in some way, your perception has been changed in some way, or magic is at work. It seems like magic because it is indiscriminate and it is indiscriminate yet consistent mm -hmm. because the constant seems to be when I close and open my notebook. Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't have anything to do with my perception. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. So something external is happening at work. I just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. What would basically cause what would cause writing, drawing to change like that? That's probably a John question. Probably, and he's nobody knows where he is at the moment. Hara might know. True, but she has a way of contacting you, and you don't have a way of contacting her. And that spell she was yeah. using is limited. It's not like she can spam that all day. Yeah. The other thing, well, uh, I, I do have that plan to try and find her. Mm-hmm traversing those underground tunnels with vigilance so mm -hmm. i might just have to hold on to this until then is anything is there anything going on in the room no everyone else is asleep there are no mars spawn guards on watch either it's just your companions asleep the room is otherwise completely quiet nothing out of the ordinary that i can tell what would you be looking for i don't know uh you know, some weird distortion in like the corner of the room where someone's mm -hmm. actually here or just any, anything physical. Okay, roll perception check. No, it's super, super, super quiet. Not as quiet as when you were completely cut off from the whole universe by time, but it's super quiet. You can't even hear any of the Maru spawn moving around or on watch or anything. You vaguely smell something cooking. It smells good. It smells real good. Like a, like a steak at wound. I'm surprised they have anything like that here. To the extent of your knowledge, they don't. You haven't seen them making any food even vaguely resembling that. Well... Since I'm not going to sleep, might as well get up and follow it. Okay. You're going to move off in the direction of the smell? Yeah. All right. Uh, as you emerge from the test chamber, which is where they've basically been keeping all of you, uh, again, there's no Mars spawn. As you move through the area following the smell, you don't see anybody else whatsoever the smell seems to be leading you towards the elevator that goes all the way up to the top but you know there's a terrible deadly storm going on up there we're storm of the century so if i go up to the roof will the elevator doors open to the outside uh out, if you take the tell because it's a teleporter that that takes oh. you up there we we actually I forgot that it's a teleporter, not an, ele not an elevator. The smell's coming through the teleporter. It takes you into a tower, which is exposed, not exposed to the elements, but it's like above the sand, or it was above the sand. There's a few layers of defense between that and the actual outside, but whoever's up there right now, they better be battening down the hatches or they're getting wrecked. Yeah. Well, I'll give it a shot. Okay. You step into the teleporter, Into wound. What? You step through the teleporter. There are waiters and waitresses going around refilling people's coffee. There's a table over there. There's people listening to music. There's, you know, cabbies reading their Northport newspapers. Breakfast, steak and eggs is being served. People are pushing past you. Do I see anyone I know? No, you don't recognize anybody. None of the local, none of the regulars at Wound, none of the, you're there fairly often. You don't recognize a single person. Is there still a, a teleporter pad where I'm at? Nope. Well, 
Well, fuck. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm um, grab a newspaper. Okay. What do I, what do I see? It's your Time, notes. Date, story. It's all the notes what? that you've been taking in your book. All the notes that got changed. There's a photograph, a black and white photograph of the completed space station that you built, but it's shaped like an infinity symbol. But I haven't built it yet. Mm-hmm. Is this like a vision? Am I actually asleep right now? Yes. A familiar voice says to you from across the table. Wait a minute. Is this? And as you lower. What the hell's her name? As you lower your newspaper, sitting in the booth across from you with a glass of elven wine is the gray elf Medwithin. The first step towards mastering oniromancy, Gaston, is recognizing when you're awake and when you're dreaming. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and call tonight's episode. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we will see you next time, I believe, with the whole gang.